Your Daily Bread with Bishop Eric Kincaid Clark. Bishop Clark is the spiritual leader of the Body of Christ Assembly Church of Cleveland, Ohio. He is an author, songwriter, and recording artist. Bishop Clark inspires us to maximize our potential through biblical teachings, revelatory insight, and healthy commentary for believers and people from all walks of life. Join our community by texting MAXIMIZE to 55444. You can join Bishop Eric Kincaid Clark streaming live on YouTube every Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. The Daily Bread Show, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. And Wednesday midweek Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m. We invite you to join our global one-hour prayer line, Monday through Friday, by calling 712-775-8968 at 8 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The access code is 304-282. Call your family and friends and get ready to be inspired. This is Your Daily Bread with Bishop Eric Kincaid Clark. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Bishop Eric K. Clark. Good morning and welcome to your daily bread. This morning, cheap worship. We're going to talk about it. Amen. A little spinoff from Wednesday night's Bible study. We had a good lesson Wednesday night. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. Yesterday I was in class and the word of God was still good and uh, good. Hey, this weekend I'm excited I'm excited that Super Seed Weekend is here. It's a weekend where we are called to stretch, sacrifice, and bless the Lord, amen, in a tangible way, amen. It is our lifestyle. We are a giving community, amen, and we learn how to worship God through giving, and uh, I'm excited about this weekend. His you. Mm. His you. Excuse me. Excuse me, my Lord. I see you this morning, Gail. Oh, Gail prayed the whole David series this morning. Everyone did a good job praying. It was Gail's first time praying. You know, God gives you people. God gives you people. Gail, I don't know when we connected. How, uh, what year I uh, was there in um, Kansas City, Missouri. Oh, that had to be at least 20, 25 years ago going back and forth out there preaching uh, for different ones in that area. And some kind of way we connected, some kind of way we connected. And here it is some 25 years later, you are plugged into me and to this ministry. And I'm very honored to have you a part of our group. I'm just, I'm just glad that you're a part. You didn't sent in your GPS, you didn't join prayer ministry. Now you lead in prayer. You know, that's what the Lord does. He gives us, you are a sign to me. I never will forget uh, Pastor Shannon, Sister Shannon. I was getting it going there, a man uh, in the new building. And uh, I've told them that before, that many years ago, God sent them to me. And there were a lot of people joining, but they were a sign. They were a sign of the Lord's blessing and favor. And Gail, I see that same grace on you. You are a sign that God has given me a national ministry, amen, through the internet. And there you are in Kansas City, Missouri. Every day you are part of this ministry. We have people in Atlanta, people in Charlotte, people in um, uh, New Mexico, people in Florida, certainly people in Ohio, people in New York, New Jersey, people around this country who are plugged into this ministry and I thank God for you. Very proud, very proud of your prayer. And I encourage uh, others to come on the prayer line and lead prayer. Come on and lead prayer. I tell you one thing, I am loading y'all up with enough word for you to pray for a week. Oh, I'm telling you, I just love listening to you pray, Gail, going through the leadership principles, some of them, many of them uh, that we've been teaching over the last few weeks, months even, about a month. Okay, I want to say good morning to everyone. Good morning to everyone that is on. Good morning to everyone. Yeah, Keith and Lisa Wesley, 
new life in Christ. If you see them, you give them my love out there in Kansas City. Amen. Okay. Uh, cheap worship. You don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. You don't want to give the Lord cheap worship. All right. Okay. Let's take a look at Wednesday night's lesson, um, which was the worship of preparation. Revelation chapter four, verse 11 says, thou has, amen, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you have created all things by your will. They exist and were created, the King James, amen, for your purpose. We're created for your purpose. We've been created to worship God and worship can be broken down into the word worth-ship to ascribe to the Lord value and worth. And that value and worth has to do with our activities. I believe that obedience is better than sacrifice. Obeying God, obedience is the highest form of worship. Like what's the, what's the, what's the best way I could worship the Lord? Obey him. Should I give this or give that? There's something higher than giving a sacrifice, and that is obeying God, obeying his principles, obeying his word, obeying the leading, obeying his direction and his guidance. Obeying God is better. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And then there is the worship of the giving of your life. Present your body a living sacrifice your whole life holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. We're not killing animals. We are crucifying our flesh, right? We're not offering bullocks and goats and turtle doves. We're offering the Lord the right spirit, the right attitude, walking in humility, walking in the spirit of appreciation, walking in his grace and his mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. We are God's image in the earth. We are his children. We are his ambassadors, um, was the 23rd Psalm says, it says, um, um, uh, the Lord's my shepherd said, I won't make me lie on green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters, restore my soul. He leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. That's what I, that's what I've been fishing for. <laughs> that, that what we do is for his name's sake. How we live is for his name's sake. Why we don't lie. Why don't we curse people out for his name's sake? Why don't we act belligerent and out of character for his name's sake? Why do we give? Why are we, why are we merciful? Why are we kind? Why are we forgiving? Why are we patient for his name's sake? Yeah, we do it for his name's sake. And so our worship is our actions. Our worship is our behavior. And then there is the giving of gifts. Amen. We we bring uh, the gift. Uh, I was a little kid. I loved the little time of Christmas because uh, it had the Grinch. It had, uh, uh, what was the cartoon uh, or the, the little thing that came on TV? What was it? The Heat Miser and then the Freeze Miser. Uh, Santa Claus is coming to town and all that stuff. I enjoyed that. But what I loved was when they would put on Little drummer boy. Come, they told me, bum, bum, bum. I have no gift to bring, bum, bum, bum. To lay before the king, bum, bum, bum. Da, 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 da. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Nah. So I'll play my drum. That was the gist of it, okay? I didn't have nothing. So I did what I could do. I'm going to play my drum. Hey, glory. <laughs> I like that. When I was a kid, I loved that. It, it made us impact, impact upon me that you give God what you have. And talent uh, evolved and came forth in my life. I could play the piano. And uh, I was inspired by Stevie Wonder. I wanted to be like Stevie Wonder. I was inspired by the Mike, by the Jackson Five and Michael Jackson. I wanted to be a singer, a performer, or something. I want to use my talent. But that rumpa bum bum, rumpa bum bum said, you know what? I want to use my talent for God. I want to play for God. I want to sing for God. I want to do what I do 
for God. And so it has its, it, it, it impl its implication. And so when you give your time, your treasure, and your talent, it becomes your worship. That's your worship. Well, is worship lifting hands? Yes. Is worship singing? Yes. What about that holy dance we do in church? That's worship too. All right. But in our lesson, David came to a place, um, Orland's threshing floor, I think it was. Is that... Uh, Mess it up. Uh, it was, I'm looking for this passage. Yeah, 2 Samuel 24. We'll get there in our in our lesson. But um, in 2 Samuel 24, David comes to Ornan's threshing floor. Now, what has happened is there's a plague. Th th there's a plague. David has numbered the people. He shouldn't have did it. There's a plague. And he's trying to stop the plague. And what he wants to do is offer a sacrifice to the Lord. And when Ornan saw, oh, this is King David. David, you can have you can have his stuff. You can have the oxen. You can have the wood to build the altar. You can, you can have it. David says, oh, no, 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 no. We, we, we don't offer the Lord no cheap worship. No. Mm -mm. We cannot offer the Lord that which cost us nothing. And there are a lot of people that want to present some cheap worship to God. Well, that was the, the essence of the lesson on Wednesday night, that the worship is in the presentation. It's in the preparation, excuse me. It, it's in the work that you put into it. And so we took a look at um, what it takes to build an altar. There's so many people, they built the altar. Abraham built the altar. Jacob built an altar. David built an altar. Solomon built an altar. Moses built an altar. They, they built the offer, altar. Elijah, Elijah built an altar. And it, it took something to build an altar. That was The worship was in building it. The worship was in building it. The worship was in strategizing and preparing and gathering and, and getting the stones and, and organizing them and setting them up. That was the worship was in that. Was not just in what you give, it's getting it. Hey, I'm going to give $100, somebody says. Well, what did it take to get it, the $100? That's that's what you're giving. So I got to go work eight hours. Oh, I got to do, I got to put up with this boss. I had to go to school. I had to pass this test. I was hoping I'd get hired. I had to get up every morning, get dressed and bathe and drive and stand in line and deal with this traffic and then go in here. Then I got to deal with this person with this attitude and this, that, and the other. And after you do this work, whatever the work is, then you get paid. That's what you're giving to the Lord. It's the anguish. It's the effort. It's the energy. It's the time. It's the attention. It's your knowledge. It's your training. It's your experience. That's what you're giving to the Lord. That's how you give God your life. So it's not just your money. Your money represents your everything. It represents your education, your time, your energy. How do you get money? So that's what you're offering to the Lord. So when you give a lot of money because you went through all that you went through to give it, it's like, I got to save. You're saving and saving and saving and saving and saving and saving. You finally get that amount that you were trying to save, $500, $20,000. You try to, why? Because you have this project in mind. And then the Holy Spirit says, I want you to sacrifice that unto the Lord. Give that to the Lord. Oh my God, wait a minute. You begin to say, you, you know all that I went through to get this? The Lord says, that's why I want it. This is why the Lord allows Abraham to go through a hundred years trying to make a baby. He, he and Sarah was going at it. They was going at it. We got to get a baby up in here. Nothing. Next month, nothing. Month after month, nothing. They tried so much. She said, I need some help. 
Come here, uh, Hagar. Give this man a baby. I mean, they went through a lot. And, and then the two girls, Hagar and Sarah, had their challenges. Man, I'm going through all this stuff. Jesus, that's, that's part of it. That's part of your worship. It's part of your sacrifice, what you go through. And then finally, Sarah's pregnant with a baby. Finally. Man, you know what we had to go through, Sarah? Like, girl, you know what I, you don't know what I had to, no, you think you know. You think it's just these 75, 80, 90 years. I, no, it's way more than that. I didn't have to deal with Agar. I didn't have to do all kinds of stuff. People laughing at me. People say something wrong with me. I didn't, I didn't endure shame and testing and patience and being humiliated. I didn't endure all this. It is my worship. That is my worship. And then when you finally get this baby that you want, believe in God for, and love so much, the Lord says, that's what I want. Offer Isaac to me. What? Come on, Lord. Come on, Lord. Let me offer Ishmael. It didn't take nothing for me to get Ishmael. No, 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 it's not the same. I don't have time to preach this. It's not the same. The experience of Ishmael would have been cheap worship. But the experience of offering Isaac would have been valuable because it's, it means so much. The Lord wants what's meaningful from you. The preacher asking for money. Why? Why he always asking for money? Because it means so much to you. <laughs> why God want your money? Because it means so much to you. That's why. Ah, I feel the Holy Ghost all over me right now. Ooh, the Holy Ghost just set on me. The Holy Ghost just set on me. That's right. God wants what means something to you. Don't offer the Lord no cheap worship. Come on, somebody. Type it in. The Lord wants what's meaningful to me. Would you type that in? Everyone type it in. Good morning, Cynthia. God bless you. Thank you for your prayer this morning. Everybody's been praying and it's been good. It's been good. T. Buckner, Carol, good morning. Good morning, Elaine. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Janice and Elvis, Cleo, Andrea, Mother Clark. Hi, Mama. Good morning, David Dobbs in the house. Lawanda, LaShonda, Keitha, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for all the prayer. Good prayer. John, Elaine. Good morning. I see you on. If you're on, make some noise. Y'all talk. Talk it up. Chop it up a little bit. Let me know y'all. Let me know somebody. Somebody's alive. Janice, God bless you, honey. Thank you for your support. I love you. The Lord must be blessing you right now because you're blessing me, and I appreciate it. I want to thank everyone. When you do something special, thank you, Elaine, for your special gift. Thank you. I like to say thank you. People are a blessing. I want to say thank you. Listen, I have too many incidents in my life where I do so much for people and I feel like they're ungrateful and they don't appreciate it. I do. I'm just going to be honest with you. I do a lot for a lot of people and I feel like in a lot of cases, they don't appreciate it. I just do not want that to be me. I don't want to be that person. I love to say thank you. I am appreciative of your support of this ministry, of your blessing in my life personally. Thank you. I appreciate you. I, I don't mind saying thank you because I, I, I do. I feel some kind of way about people. I'm doing this, that, and the other folk. They need something, they call me. They just me, 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 me. Lord have mercy. Here my day come around, they don't even, they don't even remember. Or just to have an attitude of gratitude. You know, an attitude of gratitude does not just say thank you. Do you understand? Let me help somebody with this. Maybe the Lord is, this is a teaching moment. 
what, what do you what do you do to a uh, when a person has been a blessing to you? They they keep blessing you. I don't know how that is. You can interpret that any way you want to. They're giving you money. They cook for you. They clean for you. They say nice things. They help you do di different things. You got to move and they come and help you move. You got to clean out the basement or the garage. You got to do something. They come and help. You know, something terrible happened and you need some help and they help. Whatever the case may be, here's this person that helped, that helped, that helped, right? And you say thank you. You verbally look at them and you let them know how you feel and you express appreciation to them, right? But then, um, I don't know, there's maybe a piece of business or something that happened where where they they said they was going to meet you at 2 o'clock and they showed up at 2.30. They are late, but you, you don't just light into them and scold them and constantly nitpick and run them through the mud about them being late 15 minutes. 20 minutes, you just, you just sort of leave that alone. It, it doesn't mean that they just get a pass to walk all over you and treat you any kind of way. No, no, no. But when people are a blessing to you, you just have to learn how to be gracious towards them. And every now and then you, sometimes you got to straighten it out. Like, you know, I know you such a blessing. I know you're a blessing, but I, I just want to make sure we keep things straight. You know, if you got to do that, you got to do that. But you tend not to, you know, just be uh, on to people in such a way that you 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 just ooh, you wear them out. It it'll make them feel like, you know, you don't appreciate me. And because I'm a blessing, don't mean I. There is no sense of accountability, but just let that minister to somebody. Would you would you let that minister to somebody? The old saying would go like this. He may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. Is that right? The Lord gives you life, health, strength, breath. Food, clothes, strength, salvation, forgiveness, mercy, grace, power, anointing, the list goes on. But do you scold God because he don't come when you want him to? Because he not your butler? Because things didn't work out in the time that you wanted them to work out? Do you get a funky attitude with the Lord? Mm -mm. No, he's been too good. He's been too kind. I am grateful. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. He's higher than me, and I honor him. And you know what? I, I can hear the argument coming back. Yeah, but people, people on your level, God is higher, but people on your level. Let me try to minister. You know, sometimes the Lord gets me on the side street, and I, I end up staying on the side street a little bit. One of the things that can bless you is that you put yourself in a position to be blessed. Okay, Bishop, how do I position myself to be blessed? By letting someone be greater than you. Let it sink in. Let it sink in. Because the less, read it in the book of Hebrews, is blessed of the greater. And if you live your whole life and no one ever gets to be greater than you, then there's no one in your life that can bless you. Because the less is blessed of the greater. That's, that's part of the problem with marriage. Don't, don't, don't no woman want to submit to no man. Then nobody wants to take the position of serving. They don't, nobody wants to take the posture 
of of being under somebody being over them. Nobody, nobody. So okay, okay. When well, bless yourself, then bless yourself, because there's no one to bless you. That's why. That's why the raising the kids is all jacked up, because the parents want to be the kids' friends. That there's nobody greater. She talked to you like you on her level. And you talk to the kids, parents, like they on your level. There's no one that could bless because there's no one greater. You got to be willing to allow somebody in your life to be greater than you. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> the Lord wants what's meaningful. Let me get back on track. My mother, I love to bless you, mother. It's my honor and my privilege to bless my mother and to take care of my mother. Uh, mama, I ain't talking about you. You all, you don't do nothing but say thank you. That's all my mama do. I always, I take care of my mama and I love to take care of my mama. And she always say thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't have talked. I can't even talk to her without her thanking me. Thank you, mama, for letting me be a blessing. I love to bless you. And I'm honored to do so. I ain't talking about you. <laughs> no, I ain't talking about my mama. Thank you, Lord. Don't give God cheap worship. He wants what is meaningful to you. All right, I'm going to wrap it up and let you go. You see that with parents and their kids. That's right, Elaine. Nobody's greater. You got to have a greater one. The greater one is the blessing, is the blesser. The greater one, the greater one gives instructions and insight. And the one that humbles themselves is in the position to be blessed. I, I want to walk in humility. I want to put it, be in a position for people to bless me. I don't want to always be pointing out people's faults and flaws like I'm the grand poobah. No, cut it out. Cut, stop being the grand poobah, right? What's, where did I get that term, grand poobah? Is that Fred Flintstone uh, and the uh, Water Buffalo Lodge, the grand poobah? I, I don't know where I get that from. But <laughs> stop being the grand poobah. Lord have mercy. Let somebody bless you. Humble yourself, and in due season, the Lord will exalt you. And so this weekend, as we prepare to worship the Lord, put it in your mind. I, I know some of y'all struggling. Well, am I going to get my 500? Am I going to get 1,000? Well, what am I going to do? David prepared in the time of trouble. We all got trouble. We all got challenge. You prepare in the challenge because it's your preparation that's your worship. It's your preparation. We, we cannot teach this lesson without bringing in the balance to $1,000 and 500. There's a woman in the scripture that gave two mites. It wasn't even a penny. In today's currency, she didn't even give what equaled a penny. And Jesus said, she gave more than these other people that are putting in gold and large sums of money because it was her life. She gave her life. She gave her living. It didn't, it wasn't a lot of money, but it was very meaningful what she gave. Just in case there is someone, Bishop, I don't have 500. I don't have a thousand dollars. But what I'm giving as my super seed is meaningful to me. It's sacrificial. Oh, the Lord honors your sacrifice. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God is looking at your heart. And this weekend, I want to prepare you through the word of God. Make sure you get into the right frame of mind to honor the Lord. Worship the Lord through giving with us. And don't give God no cheap worship. <laughs> Let's conclude today. Type it in. Don't give God cheap worship. Mm -mm. Let your worship be meaningful. And whether, whether that's the lifting of your hands, the lifting of your voice, 
kneeling and bowing before the Lord or even your monetary substance. Don't give God cheap worship. We bring the sacrifice of praise. Let it come from your heart. Let it be meaningful to you. Honor the Lord with what means much to you. In the way of Abraham, who's willing to take his only son from Sarah, long awaited and offer him because God wants what's meaningful to you. This is your daily bread. Ooh, y'all, the daily bread be so good. Mm, mm, mm. I wish I could bottle it, cap, put it in a bottle. Lord, put it in my heart. The word is delicious. All right. It's Friday. I want y'all to have a great day traveling this weekend, asking for your prayers as I will be in Cleveland. The word is going to be good. Certainly, you want to arrive at the Silver Spot Movie Theater at 9.30. Y'all get there early. Get a seat. We're going to try to have everyone in place again to serve our seniors. Amen. Push your way out and uh, let's worship the Lord. I checked the temperature. Hey, Siri, what's the temperature in Cleveland, Ohio right now? In Cleveland, Ohio, it's 34 degrees. It's 34 degrees. Okay. It's 34 degrees. Um, I think I'm going to have to wear my corduroys. I got to put out my, my, my it's going to be a little cold. Okay, so I'm on my way. Thank God for that. We pray God's grace on you all. You all have a great weekend. Let's prepare for the super seed. Prepare for the super seed. If you have your tithe, worship the Lord in your tithe. That is appropriate. On this Friday, I want to ask that you all would sow a $12 seed, a $12 seed for order, for administration, 12 foundations to the city, 12 pearly gates, 12 apostles, 12. Let's get that $12 seed. If you're in lead to sow beyond that, then you do as the Holy Spirit leads you. But let's, let's get in order as we get ready to come before the Lord this weekend with our special presentation, 500, 1,000 our super seed in worshiping the Lord with our heart. Okay, get that $12 seed. Would you get it? Get it right where you are and sow it right now in Jesus name. Holy Spirit, we will leave this connection, but never, never, ever, 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 never, ever our connection with you. Thank you for our time of fellowship and time uh, of, of, of um, cornelia around the word of God. Teach us how to be blessed. Teach us how to be blessed, Lord. Teach us how to be blessed. And then bless this weekend. Let it be an overwhelming success as the people worship through super seed, through sacrificial giving. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. I love you. Bow, rum, bum, bum, bum. I play before the King ba rum bum bum bum. There you go. Y'all have a good Friday. Until next time, peace to the family. Thank you for watching Your Daily Bread with Bishop Eric Kincaid Clark. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and hit the notification bell to stay connected with our YouTube community.